now at 5 o'clock. On your side, this is WHAS 11 News. Good morning. Right now at 5 o'clock, anger, anger that is in frustration in cities across the country, from Boston to Los Angeles and cities in between, the wave of protests against the outcome of the presidential election. A U of L cheerleader has been suspended following a controversial post to social media. What she said that has the university taking action. Been waiting for this project for many years. Uh, the support of the school board has been great, and we're finally there. And the big win for New Albany Floyd County Schools and the improvements on the way for nearly a dozen schools in the district. It is 5 o'clock on the dot here on your Thursday morning. Good morning, Kentucky. And I'm Derek Rose. And I'm Juliana Valencia. It is 5 on your Thursday morning. And TG, I'm glad I remembered your <laughs> frost advisory because yeah. it was cold when I was walking my dog That's, this morning. <laughs> I can tell you, first time I've had the jacket on in a while, uh, even early on this Thursday morning. Yeah, we're in the 30s across the board. So for the morning commute, it is going to be on the chilly side. The good news is once the sun comes up here a little bit after 7, we will start the warming process fairly efficiently and quickly and it should actually be a nice afternoon as winds eventually go around to the southwest but of course the uh, the jacket the coat whatever you're going to need it this morning check it out uh, i haven't seen much full blue on the map here in quite a while but you get the idea of course always a touch uh, milder here in louisville but 36 in shelbyville 32 in cordon 31 in brandenburg 32 in e-town and here in the metro area again with the uh, urban heat island as we typically see throughout the year 41 at the airport at U of L 37 Iroquois Park you go over to Lanesville in eastern Harrison County it's 30 and up to Sellersburg right at the freezing mark at 32 so frost advisory continues till 9 o'clock this morning for a good chunk of the area and we'll probably see frost and freeze advisories as we go through the upcoming weekend as well notice on our future cast here quick warm-up so we're in the 60s by the afternoon southwest winds will hold our temperatures up overnight and then we've got a little weak front that's going to sneak in here as we head into veterans day not expecting any rain just a few passing clouds and we'll knock our temperatures down but it will cool us down some for the upcoming weekend as well we'll talk more about it coming up all right, TG, a quick look at traffic this morning. Should be heading out without too many problems. 64 coming up around that 9th Street exit in downtown Louisville. Very nice and clear for you east and westbound. As we take a look, you can see a little bit of a slowdown on 71 coming down south into the junction. A little bit of construction there, but overall a smooth ride, and that should go away temporarily here. We are looking at one non-injury crash headed down south along the Gene Snyder right at 65. No injuries involved. They're just waiting on a wrecker, so you may see some police lights out in that area and other than that take a look at those drive times we mentioned 71 is a little bit slow but other than that 15 minutes will get you into town from the Snyder on 71 and 64 if you're coming out from the Snyder and about a nine minute trip through Clark County from the Lee Hamilton to the river. All right, Brooke in 502 right now, the reaction to the outcome of the presidential election playing out in massive ways overnight. Protesters filling major city streets across our country. Philadelphia, Chicago, and Los Angeles are just a few of those cities. GMK's Julia Rose is in the newsroom with the visible and intense reaction to the election. Julia? Juliana and Derek protesters took to the streets in at least 10 cities shouting angry chants, holding up anti-Trump signs, and there were even a few incidents of flag burning. In Los Angeles, people first gathered peacefully near City Hall, blocking one side of the street, holding signs and chanting, not my president. Then thousands poured into the 101 freeway overnight, blocking traffic in both directions for hours. Police arresting more than a dozen demonstrators there. People were seen spray painting buildings downtown as well as news vans with anti-Trump slogans. They also burned a large pinata designed to look like Trump's head. And a similar scene playing out in Chicago, thousands marching and protesting through the downtown area last night, voicing their disapproval of Trump's victory. The protest began shortly before 5 o'clock in the evening outside the Trump Tower. What started as a group of a few dozen soon grew to thousands. About an hour of chanting near the tower, the group began marching through the streets, those same sentiments echoing across the country like in Boston. Preparing uh, to put forward a right-wing, racist, sexist, anti-immigrant, uh, Islamophobic uh, agenda 
and we want to challenge that. It hurts my heart that people that I love are now fearful of their lives and their livelihood. We also saw numerous college students and faculty leaders taking to social media to announce support groups and even postpone exams. Now, obviously, there were many people who disagree with the protesters, and we're seeing a lot of that through social media and other demonstrations. We've actually got a post on our Facebook page, WHAS 11, about Trump and the protesters. So if you'd like to join the conversation, please do post your thoughts there. We'd love to hear from you. In the newsroom, Julia Rose, WHAS 11 News. All right, Julia, the transition to the new administration starts today as the president-elect Donald Trump prepares to meet with President Obama inside the White House. On Wednesday, it was Hillary Clinton urging her followers to support Trump once he takes office in January. President Obama echoing that message. It is no secret that the president-elect and I have some pretty significant differences. We are now all rooting for his success in uniting and leading the country. Repealing the Affordable Care Act, a new Supreme Court justice, a trade war with China and mass deportation are all part of Donald Trump's plans during his first 100 days in office. Indiana's Republican Party will welcome Vice President-elect Mike Pence home today. The group is planning an event this afternoon at the International Airport building in Indianapolis. It gets underway at 5.30 and officials say doors will open at 3.30. An investigation underway this morning following election night tweets that appeared on the account of a UofL cheerleader. That cheerleader is now suspended because her coach says the messages she posted do not reflect the university's values. The action was taken against Bryn Baker following a series of tweets, including this one. You all want sympathy so bad, expletive about racism, sexism, whateverism, literally expletive, and find the money to leave America then. The spirit coach released a statement that reads in part, I am very troubled and concerned about the exchanges that took place in social media late last evening involving one or more of our student athletes. These conversations over the last day are not an accurate representation of our program, our values, or our coaching staff. We are investigating this matter and will take appropriate action upon the completion of such. No arrests made in the Thinker statue. After the Thinker statue on UofL's campus was vandalized, this photo of the prominent statue spread on social media. You can see at the bottom of that statue, written in red, Trump, with the hashtag build that wall. By Wednesday afternoon, though, that graffiti had been scrubbed off. It is 5.06 here on a Thursday morning and still ahead here on GMK. The quick action from a local man that may have saved the life of the person who showed up to his doorstep after being shot. Kentucky's Republicans are getting ready to tackle some of the state's issues now that they have control over the House. The plan lawmakers have for today is on the other side of this break. Hey, good morning, Kentuckiana. Grab the coat as you head out the door this morning. Away from the metro area, temperatures are in the 30s, so it is a frosty start, to say the least, but we got a nice day on the way. We'll talk about that coming up, but first, your Kentucky Lottery jackpot numbers. Mega Moogan, 63 million. The Kentucky Powerball, now up to $258 million. The Kentucky Lottery, fueling imagination, funding education. Semper Fi.